All right. Good morning. Good. Well, look at you. I'm even getting a wave. Hi. <laughs> there you go. Well, good morning, everybody. What a, what a wondrous, wonderful day. The sun is out. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? It's not snowing. All right. Well, I want to welcome each and every one of you. Let us come. Let's be gathered in. Let us worship. Good morning. Please stand for the call to worship. God's blessings are all around us. We have been given this beautiful earth and all that grows and runs upon it. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. God has given us breath to live and spirit to sing. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. God has blessed us with the love of family and friends. Thanks be to God. God has gathered us into a community of care and worship. With, with thankful hearts, hearts, let us worship and sing our praises, praises to God. Please turn in your hymnal to hymn number 694. Come ye thankful people, come.
join me in the opening prayer. Good, Good and loving, loving God, God, source of every grace and blessing, we bring you thanks for the many gifts you have given us. Help us this day to be good stewards of all we have received. Bless us as we gather here to share our gifts and be your people of abundant love and hope. Send us your spirit and be present among us. In the mouth of all who speak, in the ears of all who listen, in the hands of all who serve and share your amazing grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to invite our young disciples up for our young disciples' time. So, come on up. <laughs> I know you're out there. <laughs> All right. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So what what's happening this week? Anybody know what's happening this week? Thanksgiving. Yeah. What does Thanksgiving mean? What does it mean? You don't know. <laughs> what happens on Thanksgiving? You eat a big dinner. That's right. What do you? Yeah, you say things you're thankful for. That's exactly right. You say things that you're thankful for. So that's what we're going to do today. This has become Pastor Tim's annual Thanksgiving children's sermon, <laughs> where we're going to talk about what we're thankful for. Because who do we give thanks to? Who, who do we give thanks? Who are we thanking for all our blessings? God, that's right. We give thanks to God. So I want to ask you, because I bet you guys have things you're thankful for. What are you thankful for? You just shout it out. No, write them down. What are you thankful for? Your dog. What's your dog's name? Minnie. Minnie? Well, for Minnie the dog. What else are you thankful for? Uh, hmm. For what? For daddy? Oh, how about for parents? Are you thankful for your parents? Yeah? Okay. Didn't roll off the tongue, but that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> for family, right? Are we thankful for family? Yes, we're thankful for family. What else are we thankful for? Hmm. Toys. Let's go for the biggies. <laughs> what else are we thankful for? Let's see. Food, yeah, because you all ate this morning, right? Yeah. <laughs> How about for homes? Yeah, there's a big yeah. Yeah. What else are we thankful for? Just racking our brain. Anything? Friends. All right. Anything else? Anything? Grandchildren. Oh. <laughs> For grandparents and grandchildren, right? We are. We are thankful for them. What do you think? One more? Miss Schuyler. Okay. That's right. So we could even say, like, teachers, are we thankful for school? Who's thankful? Are you thankful for school? There we go. Yeah. We should be thankful for school, and we should be thankful for, to our teacher, shouldn't we? You love your teacher. Amen. <laughs> That's right. And maybe we'll just put, we're thankful for our faith in Jesus, right? Let's say that. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> for holidays. Yeah, holidays are fun. All right, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give thanks this morning, and we're going to have everybody help us with this. So I'm going to read each of these things, and after each one, we're going to say, thank you, God, and I want you guys to say it as loud as possible. We're all going to say it, but I want you guys to be the loudest, okay? Okay, so I'm going to say what you said, and then we're going to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. All right, good practice. <laughs> They're primed and ready. Here we go. 
So on this day, O oh Lord, we come with so many blessings. We are thankful for our pets, especially for our dog, Minnie. Thank you, God, for our parents. Thank you, God, for family. Thank you, God, for our toys. Thank you, God, for food. Thank you, God, for homes. Thank you, God. And friends. Thank you, God, for our grandparents and grandchildren. Thank you, God. For Miss Schuyler. Thank you, God. For our schools and our teachers. Thank you, God. For holidays. Thank you, God. And for our faith and for Jesus. Thank you, God. We have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? So I want you to remember that as you gather for your Thanksgiving meal. All right. So with that prayer, I invite you to go. You can go to Sunday school uh, right out the back. <laughs> They're waiting for you. And everybody else, I invite you to stand. Let's share your thankfulness as we share the peace of Christ with each other. You may be seated.
morning's New Testament reading is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned, or received, or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Thank you. Our gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Luke, there in your bulletin. I invite you to stand for our gospel lesson this day. Hear these words from Luke 24. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. May God add a blessing to our hearing, living out of the word this day. You may be seated. So this morning, as you heard me with the kids, you know, thinking about Thanksgiving, I'm going to start with a, a few jokes that came from kids, actually. So the first one is, what do you get if you cross a turkey with an ostrich? So what do you get if you cross a turkey with an ostrich? Well, you get a Thanksgiving bird that buries its head in the mashed potatoes. (laughs) So what do you get if you cross a centipede with a turkey? You get fewer fights over who gets a drumstick at Thanksgiving. Aren't those cute? (laughs) That's it. That's all I got. (laughs) This is Thanksgiving week. It's it's a week for family. It's a week for food and football. It's... uh, time, most of all, to seriously reflect on and count our many, many blessings. But how do we say thank you? How do we express our gratitude? More than that, a deeper question is how do we live a thankful life? How do we live with a thankful heart in all circumstances where we realize that simply being grateful is an expression of faith, that thankfulness is an attitude and a choice of faith that we make that connects us to wholeness and wellness to holiness, and to help. Today, as uh, Sandy read from Philippians, we heard Paul express in our reading these words, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Paul is saying in this, rejoice and give thanks. Not in some situations or circumstances, but in all circumstances. Now, as we hear this, we need to understand a little bit about Paul and what it meant for him to write these words. When Paul wrote this letter to the church in Philippi, it was near the end of his life. He was slowing down. He was advanced in years. He was showing signs of physical weakness. And when in prison, during the last years of his life, he was facing impending execution for his stand for Jesus Christ. Compounding this, he was writing to the early church in Philippi, a church few in numbers, um, adherents of a decidedly unpopular religion throughout the Roman Empire of that day, a church filled with doubt and fear in the midst of an aggressive environment, facing dissension within and opposition without. And yet, Paul forcefully exclaims these words, Rejoice in the Lord, always. Again, I say rejoice. In other words, be joyful and give thanks no matter what. 
You see, being thankful and joyful are, are linked together. Research has shows that those who regularly practice feeling thankful, who regularly choose to have an attitude of thankfulness, they find as they look at their habits and they look at their lives and their lifestyle, they take better care of themselves, they get more exercise, they eat better, have stronger immune systems, they report feeling joyful, happy, optimistic, optimistic more often than those who do not. When Paul says to them, rejoice and be thankful, he was saying, no matter what is going on around you, stop. Give thanks. Not just be happy, but be thankful. Oftentimes we make our gratitude conditional. You know, when I finally have sufficient income, you know, then, then I will be joyful. When my stress improves, you know, then I will be happy. When I'm not stretched in a thousand directions, you know, then I will have time to be grateful. But Paul this day is calling to us to a deeper understanding of what it means to live with a thankful heart. He witnessed to and exhorts us to be thankful because of. The secret to be thankful is, is to not look at just the circumstances of our own life. Rather, look to Christ and what he has done for and in us and through us to touch this world. Rejoice and give thanks in the Lord always, for that is where we'll find peace, help in temptation, the assurance of God's companionship in times of struggle, hope in a new day. And Jesus is our model for this. In Luke's gospel, before Jesus was arrested, he gathered for a meal with his disciples in the upper room. So this is before he went out to be arrested and tried and beaten and crucified. And he gathers with his disciple in the midst of the meal. He takes the bread and he gives thanks. And the word that is used in the gospel is eucharisteo. It's a Greek word. Eucharisteo means grace, thanks, joy. Here's the important point and the connection of this. Jesus is there at the table knowing that in a few hours he will be facing the worst beating of his life, that he'll be going to the cross. And yet what does he do in that moment before he faces this horrible struggle that is coming that he has prepared himself for? He stops and he gives thanks. Eucharisto. He gives thanks and joy. And in our tough moments, we are called to give thanks because of what Jesus has done, is doing through us that we are given strength and the joy of our faith. For Jesus did not remain in the grave, as we heard in, in Luke, in our gospel lesson for this morning, he rose. And because he lives, we can be thankful and joyful in all circumstances. For death and hate and despair are not and never will be the final word in our lives. Thankfulness because of, but also thankfulness in spite of. Paul says to rejoice and keep on rejoicing no matter what. And Paul's life is a living commentary on this verse and a personal example of thankfulness and joy in spite of. When Paul with Silas first preached the gospel in Philippi, they were stripped, they were beaten and flogged, thrown into prison with their feet fastened into stocks, which are like little handcuffs. And about midnight, the scripture says, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them, being thankful in spite of. How could Paul possibly be filled with joy and thanksgiving in the moment of pain and hardship? How can we? So let me tell you about Martin Rinkert. The year was 1645, and Martin lived in Eilenburg in Saxony, and it was during the siege of the Thirty Year War. Eilenburg was a walled city that was surrounded by the Swedes, and, and there were 800 homes were burned. And the people within suffered from the plague, and from starvation. And it got to the point where the pastors within the town, within that village, started bearing 12 people a day. Pretty soon the pastors themselves in the town started to die and Martin Rinkert was the only pastor left. So imagine that. In this whole town, he became the only pastor left. He started conducting 50 funerals a day. I mean, can you imagine that? 50 funerals a day. He buried over 5,000 people that year, including his own wife. So when the war ended in 1648, he sat down. Martin Rinkert sat down. Now think about what he'd gone through, the death and the destruction that he had faced. And he sat down and he wrote these words. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. What wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way 
with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. That gives me chills <laughs> to think of what Martin went through and that he sat down and wrote those words that became the hymn that we heard the Quattro Horns play, that we're going to sing as our closing hymn as we sing the full poem that Mark and Rinkert composed that was then set to music. This was a man who knew horrors beyond anything we can think or imagine, who got on his knees and led people in praise and thanks to God because his gratitude and his joy were because of his deep faith and in spite of the circumstances that swirled around him. How could he write these words? How could Paul ask us to give thanks and joy in our hearts despite all we go through? Because they know that thankfulness and joy are independent of anything that's going on in our lives. For our thankfulness and our joy is founded on the eternal foundation of Christ's hope where we know in spite of anything that happens, we are not alone. And so thankfulness because of God's grace and love and forgiveness leads to being thankful in spite of anything that we may be facing. It is easy to complain. It is easy to be negative and to sit with, with friends and go over the laundry list of hurts and aches and grievances and grapes. It is easy to see the glass as only half empty and to worry about everything under the sun. It takes no effort at all to see our lives, our heart, our community is not what it should be. Our world is a real mess. There is no shortage of people telling us how horrible this world is around us. The question for us this morning as people of God is how do we respond? By joining in on griping and complaining or by taking the harder path, the more faithful path, living out, sharing our joy and thankful spirit to recognize the hurts and struggles and pains in our lives and those in our community, but not be dragged down by them, but instead lift up another way forward. For if you have a choice between going negative or being positive, choose the way that Paul, a man who endured tremendous suffering in his life, lifted up when he said, rejoice. Rejoice because what of Jesus has done and is doing in your lives. Rejoice in spite of anything that life throws your way. For a thankful heart is a joyful heart. Now make no mistake, Paul did not rejoice in the Lord for all circumstances. Rather, we are to rejoice and give thanks in all circumstances. There's a big difference here. We don't rejoice for death or pain or illness or divorce or, or cancer, but by the grace of God, we can rejoice in and during and after these difficult and painful circumstances. This does not mean blindness or denial of, of the harsh realities of life. Rather, it means that we don't let the dark realities of life blind us to the radiance of the joy to be found in the Lord. Being thankful because of, being thankful in spite of, being thankful is not just having the warm fuzzies, it is an action we take in faith. There is truth to the statement that it is hard to be thankful when we are forgetful. It is hard to be thankful when we are forgetful. And so we need to make the time to remember our blessings, as well as the author of those blessings as we give thanks to God. So let us remember, let us commit this day that we're going to leave this service today and we're going to remember and be thankful. So I urge you this day, begin a gratitude journal. Take time at the end of your day to list your blessings, the things that you are thankful to God for. To include that in a prayer. We just did that with the kids, right? We just did that. Have them just took a few minutes. I invite us to do that. I invite us to cultivate a thankful heart, which is a daily choice that we make to connect with God, to be in a relationship that nourishes and gives us so much grace and hope and new life that what could we possibly say but thank you? For when our faith is grounded in that foundation, then despite what swirls around us, we stand on the rock of Christ and we are able to say thank you in spite of and because of. So what could we possibly do but reach and seize those opportunities that are given in life to share Christ's love? What other response could we have to a thankful heart but to go and to share that love of Christ 
of all that we are thankful for. All those subtle and not so pleased for help, all those people who are struggling quietly, we seize those moments to listen and to pray and do what we can in and out of our thanksgiving. For we are not blessed for ourselves, we are blessed to be a blessing. That is why we are blessed in life. And so as we gather this week, I urge us all to gather with open eyes and hearts, recognizing all the ways and I hope you will reflect on this, and I hope you will write it. I hope you'll share it around your table on Thanksgiving, but I hope that you'll reflect on all the ways, large and small, God has blessed us, and that we come and give God our thanks and our praise for all our blessings. Let us remember this day to be joyful always, to pray continually, to give thanks in all circumstances, for it is what God wants of us and for us. Because in our thankfulness, we will find the fullness what God has in store for us. May we go forward, and may we choose each and every day to be thankful people. Amen. So let's respond to this as we sing, Rejoice, ye pure in heart, hymn 160. Let us sing of our joy and our thankfulness this morning. Let's stand. Let us sing, Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Let's come with thankful hearts to share our joys and our concerns. Our usher is going to give you a microphone, and we'll. Okay, just turn them up. Turn them on. <laughs> All right. Let's take a little walk back. Oh, Dane will get it. All right. There we go. That one's on. <laughs> All so right. Is this. All right. Now that we got that fixed. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank God. Sincerely, thank you. All right, we're going to start with uh, a little picture. This is from Ginger. So somebody's got to come give Ginger a mic that we just got turned on. Ginger. Yeah, come give Ginger a mic so she can talk about this lovely picture that she took of some really good friends of our church family. Ginger. So we bring you greetings from Peter and Jean Storer in their lovely new home in Hampton Falls, New Hampshire. Um, we visited them about three weeks ago. Um, their home is lovely. They are happily settled in. Um, they send greetings to everyone and they're looking for visitors. Um, I would tell you they live about 25 minutes from their daughter Kim and Jean is getting involved in the school where Kim's children, where Kim works and her children go. Jean is starting grandparents activities at the school um, and they're very involved. Um, I would also tell you that their daughter Kelly, when we were visiting, Kelly lives in Brooklyn. Kelly was pregnant. Three days after we left, Kelly had baby Kiernan. Um, Kieran is, was born about a month early. You will remember her, their first daughter um, came about two months early. Kieran is very healthy and stayed four days in the hospital in his home and growing well. So everything is well. Peter and Jeannie say hi and are looking for visitors. <laughs> All right, another picture that I'll talk about. Last week we did our highway cleanup. This was our brave group <laughs> we went out. So our church adopted some highway, um, Zidler Road, is that it? Am I getting it right? Zidler. Zidler, Zidler Lane Road, whatever. And then preserved part of Port Washington. So this was our group that went out. It was a nice, brisk fall day. We had chili at the church to warm our hearts and bones. And then we went out and we um, cleaned the roadway. And uh, everybody was really appreciative. They stopped and said thank you, and so it was wonderful. Although uh, one guy did come and he said, so who are you guys? And uh, I think, who was it, Marie, who said, yeah, somebody, somebody had said, yeah, we're part of that chain gang that was out here. Because I, <laughs> <laughs> I think he was a little suspicious of what we're doing in the yellow vests. He thought we were on like, you know, just let out on the day program, day pass to go clean the highway. <laughs> Um, he said, no, no, we're from the church, back when you named Methodist Church. So he was just kidding, by the way. He was joking with us. But anyway, big thank you to that group, cleaning up God's great earth. So what are your, uh, what we'll do, what are your joys? What are your concerns this morning? What are things that you're thankful for? I have a joy that I think we should all share in. Uh, this was our host week for Family Promise, and we had a full house. When we started out, we had 11 Yep. bodies in this church needing shelter and food and at the end of the week we had five because mm -hmm. a couple of our families were able to find housing this week which is a joy and as they were leaving we also found out that another family has just um, been approved for uh, housing although it's going to be a little tough for that mom to get into housing because she has to pay the first month's rent, the last month's rent, and a security deposit that equals the first month's rent. So this mom who works in a fast food place has to come up with $1,400 before she can move. But she has her apartment and we're working on ways that we might be able to help her. The irony is she's not been homeless long enough to qualify for rapid rehousing grant money. So she can't get any help with that $1,400. Uh, that's kind of a shame. But she has the promise of a home, which is a good thing. And then another of our families was told that the, the mom has a job starting this coming week. So altogether, our family promise program is working. And it was a joy for those of us who had the opportunity to be here and cook or sleep overnight, it was a joy. So yes, we was. had a great time. Yeah. Also about the food, thank you to everybody who brought meals. They were delicious and the families loved them. They went to the motel. This week is a motel week because Thanksgiving is hard to get volunteers. So they um, took all of the food, all of the leftovers that we had brought for all those meals and they took them with them. And so we don't have as much food here as we usually do at the end of a week. And so thank you. I just want to echo Connie's thing. Thank you to those of you who slept overnight, who set up, who took down, who cooked, who just stopped by, who chatted with them. It made a difference. 
And so it is good that we started with 11 and went to 5. That's exactly what we want to see happen in a week because we want people to not, you know, have to sleep in a church but find a home and a job. So thank you. Thank you for reaching out to these homeless families of Ozaki County to um, share of your blessings um, through this ministry. So what other joys do you have? What other concerns? What else are you thankful? How about the Barleys? You want to mention your thankfulness? <laughs> Who wants to speak for you? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We're get you a mic. We need to hear this. <laughs> this is a big, big joy. Uh, my older sister, Kelly, and her husband, Mike, they just had their baby boy, Patrick Michael, born last Friday. So we're enjoying a new little one, new boy in our family because you know there's so many women <laughs> so um, yeah it's been a very fun joy for all of us my parents first grandkid so it's been fun all right so a great joy yeah let's <laughs> so a great joy for kelly and for mike um to welcome their first little one little patrick michael <laughs> and i saw a picture he's wearing all badger gear Go Badgers! They won! Yay! My alma mater! Yay! <laughs> All right. Other uh, joys this morning or concerns that you have for yourselves or the community or the world? Yeah, Marilyn, in the back there. I just want to say thank you to the Quattro Horns. We're just so happy to have you here, and it's beautiful. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Any other prayers this morning? As always, I invite you to keep those on our prayer chain in your prayer on the front of our, our bulletin, our hearts at home, those serving our nation. Um, you should have gotten cards in the beginning of the service, and uh, we invite you to fill those out with a prayer that you have. So be a part of our prayer chain. Um, we do take pray, prayer seriously here, and so we want to pray with you and pray for you. And, Celebrate this thankfulness, but also be with you in those tough times and, and lift you up in prayer. So let us come and uh, let us take this time as we pause and let us come and be a community in prayer. Let us, let us pray. Almighty God, we gather on this morning. We gather on this beautiful morning to come and to offer our thanks. Knowing, O oh Lord, that we find ourselves in all sorts of different circumstances. Our world finds itself in all sorts of situations and circumstances. And yet we are joyful because, joyful and so thankful, because of your great love and hope and grace that surrounds us, that is our foundation, the rock upon which we stand. And we are joyful and thankful in spite of the things that are going on around us in our lives because of your great love and your grace. So, oh Lord, help us to have each and every day that thankful heart. Help us, Lord, each and every day to remember all those ways you're moving in and through our world as we this day come in prayer. And we do lift you in prayer, those who are struggling this day, who are going through some tough times. For those who find themselves ill or injured in the hospital or assisted living centers, we lift them up in prayer for your healing presence to surround them. For those who are grieving a loss, whose hearts are heavy with losses either recent or not so recent, but yet the pain is still there in their heart. We pray for your peace and your comfort that does pass all understanding to be with them. For a world, O oh God, that is broken in so many ways, with poverty and homelessness and violence, injustice and famine, O oh Lord, we do pray for our world. For, O oh Lord, we know that in the midst of all this, that this is not the final word. This is not the way that you leave us. So, O oh Lord, help us this day to Hear that call that is placed in our hearts and lives. Have us to have open eyes and hearts this day to see that you are already moving in this world and calling us to join you in thankfulness and in joy, to share of our blessings, to, thank, to share of our thankfulness, to share of the joy that we find in our faith. For, Lord, we do have our joys, the joys of, of births and of new little ones that have joined families, the joys of music that lifts our souls, the joys of ministries where we get to reach out and, and touch this world and in our little corner of the world work to make it a little brighter and a little more hopeful and a little happier for those that are placed into our path, O oh God. And most of all, we are joyful because of Jesus Christ, who does know our hurts and our struggles, who did die our death and who did rise for our sake and because of that resurrection has given us such 
tremendous joy and strength of our faith to know that death and despair and hopelessness are never the final word, never the last word, for you are with us. And for that, we are truly thankful and truly joyful. So, Lord, we come to offer you these prayers, but there are others on our hearts, so we pause for a moment just to let your Holy Spirit speak to us, nudge us in this time of silent prayer. O oh God, as you've heard our prayer silent and spoken, hear us as we join with one voice and heart as we pray together as a community. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but lead us from us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. announcements. Um, so today we have a very special event going on at the church. The, uh, the Bel Canto Senior Singers, the Mequon branch of them, are going to do a concert, a free concert here at the church at three o'clock. So I do invite you all to come back for this great concert. We also could use just a little bit of help. We have chairs out in the coat room. We just need to set up 14 chairs right here uh, for our senior singers. So come back today at three. Then uh, as that's concluding, our children are going to have their Christmas program rehearsal at 4, and then downstairs in Fellowship Hall we'll have dinner for everybody. There's no choir rehearsals tonight. Rick has a big concert with the, um, in uh, the West Bend with the orchestra that he conducts. And Michelle, as you know, is in San Diego on her three-day cancer walk. Our prayers are with Michelle and her kids as they are walking 60 miles in California um, to raise money for breast cancer research. So no choirs. Tai Chi on Monday and Friday? No Friday. Not Friday because of the holidays. So only Monday. Only Monday for Tai Chi. Lunch punches meeting on Tuesday at 11. And then our lunch, we're still doing our study on faith. So you're invited to that. And then our sign-up sheet is still by the main door. So sign up to bring food or help at the Thanksgiving meal site, which of course is this Thursday. So if you want to come help, we're going to leave the church at 9.30. And um, the doors will open at 10 and will be done at 11.30. So we're only helping to prepare. Um, so if you want to come and be a part of that, that would be great. In your uh, bulletins, little red insert. It's red because we're thinking of poinsettias. And so it is time to order for Christmas. Believe it or not, our poinsettias. These are due December 3rd. So if you want to fill these out, you can read through information and then just uh, turn it back in in the offering plate. Um, I think that was it. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. I see hands. Karen. All right, so the giving tree will appear next Sunday with the tags. And as you know how this works, these are for two families um, that are struggling. And so you take a tag, you get a gift, and you bring it back. And then we hand that out. So watch for the tree. And Marilyn. Right, so this is our family winter clothing. We're starting it early because we <laughs> realized to get these clothes to people who need them, um, you got to start early. So we started early. So your clothes, so your coats 
and your scarves and your hats and your mittens if you're cleaning out your closets at home, which, by the way, Audrey and I did. We have two bags already, and then we just discovered you're doing this here. So as you have those winter coats and clothing items, bring them to the church. They're going to go to our meal site where we serve, and then to Repairs of the Breach, who work with homeless adults on the streets of Milwaukee. So bring them to the church, and we'll hand them out to where they need to go. And I read. So for the giving tree, you just got to wrap your gifts. It's a little different for us. But we'll, yeah, take outside. We'll get that out here. Uh, and if you forget, we'll wrap it. How's that for service? <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Let us come with thankful hearts, with hearts that truly recognize how God has moved in and through our lives and how blessed we are. Let us come to share of those blessings as we pour out our hearts this day as we come to collect our offering. I want to invite our ushers forward to collect our morning offering. Um, and then our quattro horns for another gift of music. Oh Lord, we gather this morning, and what do we say but thank you. Thank you for all the ways you move in and through our lives and for our many blessings. This day we give back to you out of that thankful heart as we continue each and every day to make that choice to grow in our thankfulness and our faith, continually seeing and recognizing those many blessings that flow from you and through us to touch this world, to share your grace and hope and love and peace in Christ's name. Amen. Let's join in our closing hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, and let us come to sing Martin Rinkert's full poem that he wrote on that day after suffering such tremendous loss. So let us join together as a community of faith to sing Now Thank We All Our God.
And so I say to us this day, let us go forward and let us rejoice and be thankful because of what God has done and in spite of anything we may go through. Let us go forward in thankfulness and in peace as we sing to close our service, Go in the Peace of God. Thank you.